Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Lead us the way of Christ. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Lead us in the way of lament. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Lead us in the way. Of humility. Humility. Hugh. Mill. Hugh. Hugh. Mill. Mill. Ah. Ah. P. P. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Lead us in. in the way of justice. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Lead us in the way of compassion. Blessed are the pure in heart, they will see God. Lead us. In the way. In the way. Of right motive. Right motive. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Lead us. Lead us. In the way. In the of peacemaking. peacemaking. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Lead us. Lead us. In the way. In the way. Of surrender. A weather. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Lead us in the way of radical love. Amen. 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 Well, hey, everybody. I'm here with Pastor Tamil, And as many of you know, um, we did a question answer period uh, to wrap up the Beatitudes series, the Jesus Way series, uh, just the other week. Mm -hmm. And we didn't actually get to all of the questions and mm -hmm. we wanted to honor everybody by getting to all the questions. And actually, uh, we had saved one of the bigger questions for last. Right. And so I didn't want to cut it short. I wanted to be able to, to give it the justice that it deserved. Yeah. And so here we are. We're going to take a few minutes to just uh, wade through this final question. We'll do our best to, uh, to answer it and to kind of uh, just draw you into the way Scripture actually would answer it. Mm -hmm. That's hopefully the answer that we're hopefully. looking for, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I hope so. Uh, so, Tamil, what is the, the actual initial question that we got? Sure. All right. Many of the things that we're called to do in the Beatitudes require, at least on some level, for us to be vulnerable. But from a practical perspective, that can be very hard. Mm -hmm. Can you share any biblically rooted tips for embracing the vulnerability necessary to respond to these calls in the Beatitudes? Yeah, vulnerability. Yeah, um, big topic. It is. It's a huge yeah. topic. And, and I, I think they're on to something there mm. in the sense of... I would actually say that vulnerability um, is absolutely necessary even to experience salvation. Mm -hmm. So I think the Bible, uh, first off, so I, I think we should wade through a little bit about what the Bible kind of portrays vulnerability to be yeah. compared to what our culture does. Yep. Um, so I, I agree with them completely to live the Beatitudes, to live the Sermon on the Mount, to live the way that we're called as Christians. Uh, takes an incredible amount of vulnerability, mm -hmm. and, and I think it's, a, it's an essential posture to how we have to live as Christians. But the world might differentiate. So mm -hmm. what I mean by that, uh, salvation. Um, Romans chapter 10, the Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, if you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Mm -hmm. And so this is one of our Romans Road passages that we use for our, our thing, you know, our process of salvation. Uh, not that I endorse the Roman Road, um, but Paul is telling us something here that's important and it's yeah. connected 
to, to this question. Yeah. If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, mm -hmm. right away the statement, Jesus is Lord, mm -hmm. is about vulnerability. Yeah. Because the only way for Jesus to be Lord is you have to give up your lordship, mm -hmm. give up your control, uh, give up your lordship, your lording over your own life, and actually give it fully to Jesus. Yeah. That's what the statement Jesus is Lord really means. And then it says, and believe in your heart. So the Bible connects our heart and our actions. Mm. So what's coming out of our mouth mm -hmm. needs to be believed in our heart. And so Paul's saying, what comes out of your mouth, the statement, Jesus is Lord, you're declaring, yep. but that you're also believing, right. that it's making that connection. Yeah. And that connection in itself is vulnerable because it is a radical submission, maybe use that word, or a radical realization yep. that you need Jesus to be your Lord. Right, that we don't have it. We yeah. don't have it all together. We don't have it under control that we actually need to surrender our lives yeah. to, to God. Yeah. 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 And so when the Bible digs into vulnerability, it's interesting mm. because it doesn't use the language vulnerability. It often actually uses the language of weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that often um, with people like the Apostle Paul, yes. who would be a, a, a perfect example of that. If we jumped over to um, 2 Corinthians, um, Paul is navigating a really interesting thing in this passage where he's talking in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 about this man who was taken up to a third mm. heaven. Yeah. And the Jews believe that the third heaven was the heaven that God dwelt in, right? And so essentially saying this man, he's talking about himself, right. uh, was, was taken up into the third heaven, has actually experienced the heavenly things that he can't even express. Mm -hmm. And he says, uh, that is boastable. That's something you could boast about, mm -hmm. but he's actually choosing not to. And the reason he's choosing not to is because he wants to boast about his weaknesses mm -hmm. because it's his weaknesses that actually point people to Jesus. Yeah. It's not him boasting about this experience. Right. And so it's really interesting. He says, but I refrain. He said, I'll boast about a man like that but I will not boast about myself, this is verse five, except about my weaknesses. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool. So the fool boasts, mm. right? Mm -hmm. The fool boasts about their own accomplishments. Yeah. Because I would be speaking the truth, but I refrain so no one would think more of me than is warranted by what I do or what I say or because of these surpassingly great revelations. Now listen to what he says. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. In order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh. So being conceited and vulnerability do not exist well together. No. Okay. Uh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. Scholars don't have a clue what he's talking about. Yeah. We really literally don't know what this thorn in the flesh is. We know that it's something that tormented him in one way or another, whether yeah. it's physical, emotional, mental. We don't know. But he pleaded to God and listened to God's answer. But, this is what God said to him, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that mm -hmm. Christ's power may rest on me, some versions say in me yeah. or through me. That is why for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulty, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Hmm. What Paul is showing us here is what the Bible talks about with vulnerability. Yeah. What the Bible talks about about vulnerability is not just a willingness to say, hey, I messed up and like we should, I'll tell you about that. I'm going to be really vulnerable with yeah. you right now. What he's actually saying is um, I'm radically accepting my weaknesses for what they are mm -hmm. and I'm actually going to let those weaknesses glorify God. Yeah. So think about this in a worldly sense. Yeah. What Paul is celebrating for Christ's sake is being insulted hardships during persecution and other difficulties mm -hmm. because when he's weak then he's actually strong 
So our culture actually often says you need to be competent, you need to know what you're doing, you um, even if you don't. Right. At I least mean, look like you do. Exactly. Right? Like yeah, how many people, if we were really radically honest with ourselves, yeah. have been in a situation in the workplace where they didn't have a clue what their boss was asking them to do, but they acted competent in it. Yeah. And they may have successfully navigated it or they may have not. Yeah. But <laughs> it's really identity based. Mm -hmm. So the way the Bible goes about vulnerability is based on identity and radically accepting these weaknesses. Mm -hmm. So our identity is often built in our status, our power, our even our religious yeah. structures and powers yeah. and, and our status in the church and all these different things. We want to make sure we're seen as holy and righteous and all these fancy Christian words. And yet we're being tormented internally because we know most of that actually isn't our reality. Mm -hmm. And so in our culture, we play this, this kind of role. Yeah. I, I actually think, um, and I, I don't want to get too much into gender, but I actually think guys are the worst for this hmm. because men have this like man complex where we, we need to be right. We need to be fixers. We need to be able to handle every situation and we have to portray ourselves as competent at all times. Mm -hmm. And we actually build our identity yeah. off of those things. Right. And what the Bible's actually saying is build your identity in your weaknesses. Yeah. And God will walk you toward your strengths. Yeah. And so when we're, our identity is rooted in Christ, we are naturally vulnerable mm -hmm. because we've accepted him as Lord and we've walked through yeah. uh, all those things. I'm a sinner. I know that I can't do this on my own. There's nothing more vulnerable than saying, I can't do this yeah, myself. Yeah, I don't have this. Yeah. yeah. But our culture is always saying, but you should have it. Right. You should have it. You need to be competent. You do. And a lot of it is rooted in shame. Mm -hmm. And and that's what's driving how we build our identities. Yeah. So to shorten the conversation slightly to get in, because there's a lot of other examples, but um, essentially Paul is saying, don't build your identity in your strengths. Yeah. The things that you think you're super competent at. If you're in Christ and you're uh, professing Jesus as your Lord and you've, you've like, I'm a sinner, I'm broken, I recognize all of that in my life, mm -hmm. allow God to shape that identity mm -hmm. and celebrate the weaknesses and accept them because that's where he will be showing his power. Yeah. Our actual need as guys, especially to always be competent, to always be, is this false dichotomy that's been created in a culture mm -hmm. that's trying to dupe us yeah. and really not let us know who we are right. in Christ. Yeah. What's wild about this passage to me is thinking about Paul, right? And where yeah. he's coming from when he writes this. Mm -hmm. Like Paul was the guy who had it all together, yeah. right? When he was, before he had his encounter with Christ and started yeah. um, following Jesus, he, he was like, front of the pack yeah in, he was the Jewish Jew culture. of all Jews the Jew of all he, Jews he yeah. literally says that about himself right. I was the Jew of all Jews yeah right? so if so if that mattered at all to him mm -hmm. you know he had a place where he could go and, and be you know the guy who had it all together the guy who followed the rules best and he even yeah. you know killed Christians because he was so zealous in his in his faith which you know to us, that's not such a great thing. But in, in that yeah. context, it was like he was like the, the Jew of all Jews. Yeah. Right. And here he's saying, like, it, it doesn't that doesn't matter. Yeah. Right. What matters to him, what he's boasting in now isn't his successes. It's not his reputation. It's not the way yeah. that he was able to practice his religion. And I mean, this is Paul. He's writing most of the New Testament. Right. If yeah. anyone could brag about his yeah. faithfulness, it's Paul. But yeah. he's saying, no, I'm going to boast in my weaknesses because yeah. that's where I meet. Jesus. Yeah. So he's not yeah. boasting about his golf game and right. how good he is at golf. He's not boasting about his latest promotion. He's not boasting about his salary. Mm -hmm. He's not boasting about the size of his house. He's not boasting about the, the midlife crisis Corvette that he bought. <laughs> he's, he's not doing any of that. He's not highlighting all the highlights of his life. Mm -hmm. What he's actually highlighting is the insults, the hardships, mm -hmm. the weaknesses. Mm -hmm. 
He's celebrating them. Yeah. And, and that, that's vulnerability. That's what leads him to vulnerability because his identity is built in those things yeah. instead of all the other. Yeah. Um, and the other thing I love about this is that he actually doesn't tell us. I love that he doesn't tell us what the thorn in his flesh is, right? Yeah. Because if, if he told us, we would make it all about that, yes. whatever the weakness is, right? We would make yeah. this passage all about that. But instead, there's almost like an invitation for us to identify with Paul. Yeah. Because we've all got those things, right? Mm -hmm. We've all got those things that, um, that we don't feel good about or that we struggle with. And so we can identify with this passage and recognize that this truth that he says, my grace is all you need. My power works best in his weakness, yeah. right? This is what God told him. Yeah. And this is what God tells us, yeah. right? And our egos don't, don't uh, allow us to accept that grace. Mm -hmm. I, I've said that numerous times at this church even, where we struggle to live under God's grace. We struggle mm -hmm. to actually accept it, to actually mm -hmm. receive it and live under it. Mm -hmm. Instead, our shame uh, in our culture and all of those things drive us toward building ourselves up mm -hmm. and being secure in how we've built ourselves up. When God's really just saying, my grace is sufficient for you. Yeah. You only need my grace and live vulnerably as with Jesus as your Lord. Mm -hmm. Now it's interesting too, mm -hmm. because another story in the Bible actually shows uh, amazing vulnerability and mm -hmm. really how the Bible would talk about vulnerability. And it's ironic because I just talked about my concern about men <laughs> and it's a woman right. in the Bible yeah. who actually does what I'm talking about. So could you share a little bit about that? story specifically? Yeah, we're talking about uh, the story in um, Gospel of Luke chapter 7, yeah. where a woman who's known to be a sinful woman, um, but why don't, I'll, I'll just read, read it. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him, so Jesus went to his home and sat down to eat. When a certain immoral woman from that city heard he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Then she knelt behind him at his feet. Uh, sorry, last one's about there. Weeping, <laughs> weeping. <laughs> her, her tears fell on his feet and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. And then we see a reaction against this. Yeah, I love, right? I love this reaction. Yeah. It's so typical. Yeah. It's so typical. Yeah, so when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know what kind of woman this is that's touching him. Mm. She's a sinner, right? And then Jesus corrects him. So Jesus yeah. answered his thoughts. He says, Simon, he said to the Pharisee, I have something to say to you. Go ahead, teacher, Simon replied. Then Jesus told him this story. A man loaned money to two people, 500 pieces of silver to one and 50 pieces to the other, but neither of them could repay him. So he kindly forgave them both, canceling their debts. Who do you suppose loved him more after that? And Simon answers, I suppose the one who, uh, for whom he canceled the larger debt. That's right, Jesus said. And then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust from my feet, but she's washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss, but from the time I first came in, she's not stopped kissing my feet. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she has anointed my feet with rare perfume. I tell you her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven. Mm -hmm. So she has shown me much love. But a person who has forgiven little shows only little love. And then I love this. Jesus turns to the woman and he says, your sins are forgiven. He takes that time. He, he, he takes that opportunity to connect with her and to tell her that she's been forgiven. And now this obviously makes the guys who were there upset. The men at the table said among themselves, who is this man that he goes around forgiving sins? And Jesus says to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Yeah. So he affirms her. Right? He yeah. affirms her faith. Yeah. Yeah. It's an incredible story, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like when I, when I read it, I just imagine what it must have been like for this woman to walk into this room yeah. where she knew where she stood. Yeah. Right. She knew what everyone in this room yeah. thought of her. Yep. Yeah. That it's she like was she dirty. Shouldn't even be there. She she didn't belong yeah. there. Right. Yeah. And I don't know about you. Uh, I don't like going places 
where no one likes me. Yeah. <laughs> like if I'm like, if I know I'm going into a room and everyone's gonna think that I'm just like the dirtiest sinner there, that's not a place that I choose yeah. to go. Yeah. But we see something drew this woman into this, yeah. this connection, right, yeah. with Jesus. Yeah. And uh, ultimately, he was probably the one person she's ever met that actually showed her love. Yeah. Right? And so yeah. there's this, this willingness to receive love mm -hmm. uh, from Jesus, to, to pour love out yeah. for Jesus because she's been forgiven so much, right? Yeah. And it's that love and forgiveness that actually allows her to have the courage to yeah. step into that position of yeah. vulnerability, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, an author, Brené Brown, mm -hmm. um, she talks, she's an expert mm -hmm. in vulnerability. Yeah. And, uh, and she talks an awful lot about it being courageous. Yeah. To be courageously vulnerable. Yeah. And so this woman walks in and she shouldn't even be there. She knows she's being judged. She knows all of these things. She's approaching Jesus, the rabbi, uh, the intimidation of all of that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, but she knows she's got to do it. Yeah. She knows she needs to do this. And so the vulnerability needed to be able to walk into that room, mm -hmm. to approach Jesus, and then to, to begin to wash his feet with the perfume, and, and knowing that it's setting off the room, it's, people are murmuring and all of that. Like, think about that in our culture now. We wouldn't do any of that. No. Right, you say you don't like to go into a room where people, we don't, we don't even, like, if somebody portrays that they may not even like us, mm -hmm. we either like turn people against them mm -hmm. or, or we're like, stay away Unfollow, from them. Unfollow, delete, yeah, block. Yeah, like, like whatever, right? Yeah. Or if somebody doesn't agree with your thinking and right away we're like offended yeah. and we're like, no way, I can't. Yeah. That's all a lack of vulnerability yeah. where this woman was just, just went in yeah. and, and did what she needed to do and yeah. what is the result? And because that's the result of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. What is the result? What does Jesus say to her? Well, he forgives her yeah. her sins. And then I love that he affirms her faith, right? Because yeah. this this is a woman who could never do anything right. Yeah. And Jesus says, you know what? Your faith has healed you. Yeah. Right? Go in peace. It's pretty powerful. So when yeah. the Bible talks about vulnerability yeah. and the forgiving of sins, mm -hmm. there's a need to actually practice vulnerability. Mm -hmm in all aspects in order to connect with Jesus in the way that he's calling us to. Mm -hmm. So this vulnerability topic, this is actually incredibly important. It's foundational almost, right? You could look at it yeah. as one of the foundational yep. aspects of what it means to be um, a follower of Jesus. If we don't right. get this, we, we, we haven't got it. If we don't yeah. get vulnerability, to some extent, we're always going to struggle, yep. right? Brene Brown, like look at all of the books she's written and the, and the yep. um, talks that she's given because this is a struggle for us. That's why it's a big topic, but the reality is that if we can't be vulnerable, we're really going to struggle. And she talks about that as well, actually. Like we, yeah. spirituality is only actual, actually possible if we're able to be vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. And God, I think, put us in community for that exact reason, right? Yeah. I mean, if you look at, at, the, at the writings of James, um, <laughs> you know, James talks a lot, like in chapter 4, you adulterous people, don't, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity with God, like separation from God? It, it, you know, uh, therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. We read verses like that and we're like, you know, I have to be away from the world, but yet we're not. Yeah. Like that, that, that's a concept in the church that I actually really laugh at. You know, we, we, will, we will argue with people about our faith. We will defend our faith. But yet everything we do is just as worldly as the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. The way that we deal with our money, the way that we hide our sin, the way that we, many different things are so much worldly. And that's what the Bible is talking about. Yeah. When it says the ways of the world, it's saying decision-making, loving, all those ways. If it's worldly, it's mm -hmm. self-centered. Mm -hmm. If it's not worldly, it's vulnerable. Yeah. And so I think he put us in community for a reason. And there is a passage in chapter 5, verse 16, where he says, confess your sins to each other mm -hmm. and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Mm -hmm. He's not just talking about physical healing yeah. or just emotional healing. He's talking about being healed, yeah. holistic healing. Yeah. Um, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. In the Christian church today, mm -hmm. because of our lack of vulnerability, we 
don't confess. Yeah. We, we say our individualistic culture comes through and we say sin is between me and God. Only right. God knows. Well, God yeah. knows all things. He knows when you're sinning, when you will sin, when you... When, like all of that. He already yeah. knows. Mm -hmm. So your confession to him is great. That's wonderful. Yeah. But he's also saying confess your sins to each other and pray. So that's a setting a posture mm -hmm. for the way that we pray. And then when that happens, you'll be healed. Yeah. So there's this amazing... Uh, uh, response to that type of vulnerability yeah. where we don't just, you know, have a vulnerable moment, yeah. but that we're vulnerable. Jesus is our Lord, right. meaning I can't do this on my own. Yeah. I mess up. I need Jesus and I need others who are also in Christ with me. Mm -hmm. And we have to talk about that. Mm -hmm. But we've set a culture often in the church that does the opposite. Yeah. I need to look like I'm living a really highly spiritual life mm -hmm. and I'm just going to keep a lot of this stuff a secret. Yeah. And one of the things that, um, and I won't get too much into this because we're 20 minutes in. We don't have a, a but, uh, yeah, time I guess limit there's no on time this, right? <laughs> one of the things on a personal note yeah. that I received when I... Uh, received Christ yeah was was actually beginning to explore my true identity yeah I grew up in a hockey town yeah in a hockey culture I started playing hockey at like three and a half four years old yeah all my friends were hockey players all my girlfriends were the girls that hung out with the hockey players like I don't I don't need to go on you know you can imagine and there was a culture that came with that mm -hmm. and I just became that culture and so part of that culture is that, you know, you, school really doesn't matter. You, you're not actually that smart and you're totally relying on your athleticism and your good looks um, <laughs> to, to get you by. Yeah. And uh, I even had teachers that told me that if I didn't make it in hockey, I wasn't going to make it anywhere in life. Yeah. Uh, that I wasn't intelligent and, and so on. I remember asking some deeper questions in class and people laughing because it came from me. And so my response to that was, okay, I'll just be a dumb jock then. Yeah. And I'm not saying all hockey players are that or anything, yeah. but there's, there's a like culture. There's like a pressure, right? There's a pressure yeah. to fit within kind of a certain realm of what it meant to be a hockey player. And yeah. so that those expectations were put on you. Yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't me. Right. It wasn't me. And I didn't even realize it. Yeah. Until Jesus found me, I found him. We can argue theologically about that. Um, <laughs> But the freedom that I found yeah. was that now I was freed from being the faker, yeah. free from living what the culture was telling me to live, free from all the stigmas that surrounded being a hockey player, mm -hmm. and uh, was now able to just find who I am, Yeah, who I am. And I started to find out that I, I, I wasn't nearly as dumb as I thought I was, yeah. that I could be successful academically, yeah. that I... Um, you know, could like cars and hang out with people that weren't from that culture. Um, and so it was incredibly freeing yeah. to begin to shape my identity in who God created me to be, rather than shaping my identity in who the culture around me was pressuring me to be. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the freedom that we see in the New Testament. Totally, yeah. It's a freedom that we see where they're taking off their head coverings and then Paul's like, well, I don't know, like, it's like you're all wearing <laughs> yeah. bikinis here, put it back on, right? Because only prostitutes took off their head coverings. But they felt like they had that freedom yeah. and they did. Yeah. And you see that celebrated. Yeah. But that's, that freedom yeah. is rooted in that vulnerable posture of saying, I have built the wrong identity. Yeah. I've built it in the world and I want to build my identity in Christ instead of the world and I can't do it without Jesus. Mm -hmm. I can't do it without Jesus. I can't do it without a faith community. And so I'm going to lay it all out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you the things that are up with me in community, small groups, different things like that and I'm just going to be radically honest yeah. with God yeah. and with others yeah and i think that's a good way to describe vulnerability it's a radical uh posture of honesty mm -hmm. with yourself with god and with others yeah you're no longer hiding who you are yeah internally yeah
Yeah, and I think this, this James passage, it's funny how, how this is such a struggle for us, this confession thing, mm -hmm. right? And we, we deal with all of this shame and it's very uncomfortable and we're like, who can we trust? Who, who can't we trust? Yeah. And unfortunately, there, there is a reality to the fact that the church doesn't always really do, do a good job, right, with, with uh, when we're honest and when we're dealing with struggles. So people yeah. get, the, get walls up. Yeah. But the reality is that actually should just be the way that churches roll, right? It sh it, mm -hmm. We should, because this whole thing is built on grace. We just talked about it, yeah. right? Like we're, we're the people who are saved by grace, who are living every day by the grace of Christ. Yeah. And so, when, and I think, you know, our, our church family, I think we're trying to move towards this where there's an ability to just be honest. Yeah. And, and, and of course there's healing because we, like, if you want an addiction to grow, the best thing you can do is keep it a secret, yeah. right? You know that, so like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if, if we want to experience <laughs> healing in any, in any form, holistic healing, right? It always involves an ability to be honest and to receive yeah. help from others. And so um, yeah. so that comes comes into play when we're dealing with ha confession around sin. And it's also just like, I think what you're talking about with identity in yeah. Christian community, like we believe people can change because of grace, right? And so there's an incredible freedom where we get this belief that we have to kind of meet people's expectations. We've got to look competent. We've got to be the jock. We've got to be the, the smart kid or whatever it is that we yeah. feel people are expecting from us. Yeah. But as followers of Jesus, like that's none of that holds any weight anymore, yeah. right? It's it's a community of grace. It's a community that's built on on like Christ. Yeah. And so we're free to change our minds, to mess up, to get back up, to figure yeah. out who we are, and and to bear with each other through that whole process. Yeah, because Jesus yeah. is saying you're forgiven. Yeah. You're forgiven. Yeah. And He's calling us to live forgiven. Yeah. And that in itself is a vulnerable thing to do, mm -hmm. right? If I if I struggle with receiving and living forgiven, it's mm -hmm. because I'm struggling with being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So Paul talks about walking by the Spirit. And yeah. so he starts to give us answers to this, right? So in Galatians chapter 5, so I say walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Desires of the flesh, he's talking about worldly living. So he's mm -hmm. not just talking about sexual things. The minute we hear flesh, that's what we think. Mm -hmm. But being fleshly, the way the Bible talks about that is really another fray, another way of saying being worldly. Um, for the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other. Mm -hmm. We have this conflict internally that is always happening. And if we build our identity in the world, in the flesh, in our own competencies, in our own ability to control the situation, in our own ability to lead, mm -hmm. in our own ability to know the answers, all of that stuff, then we're building our identity in that flesh and we're in battle with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. He's calling us to not be in battle with the Spirit, but to be in tune with the Spirit and to listen to the Spirit and respond. Mm -hmm. to the Spirit. And that's what Paul found the secret of, mm -hmm. is living life in the Spirit. He says they are in conflict with, you, with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. There is an aspect in the Bible that talks about we don't just do whatever we want. Right. It's, that's not the life that he's calling us to. But if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Mm -hmm. And so the oppression of the law, you're being freed from that when you're led by the spirit. So if we connect all this back to the Beatitudes, yeah, vulnerability, how do we live the Beatitudes? Uh, yeah, you've got to be vulnerable in order to live them because listen to what they were. Yeah. If we just look at blessed are the poor in spirit, what we preached about was the way of trust. Yeah. Blessed are those who mourn for they'll be comforted. We preached about lament mm -hmm. and we preached about uh, humility for the meek and justice, those who who hunger and thirst for righteousness. It's the way of justice, the way of compassion, the way of right motive, the way of peacemaking, the way of surrender, the way of radical love. All of those things you have to identify mm -hmm. as a person in Christ who's broken mm -hmm. and needs to be saved. Yeah. Because that's what salvation, like you know, if you don't need to be saved, if you're good, if you got this, Jesus actually said, well, I didn't come for you anyway. Yeah, I came for the, to heal the sick. That's right. Yeah. And we're the sick. Yeah. We're the sick. And until we recognize that we're the sick, yeah. we will struggle yeah. with any form of vulnerability. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so I think um, just to kind of sum up the, the biblically rooted tips, mm -hmm. I think that posture that we saw in that woman, 
yep. uh, who was anointing Jesus' feet yep. of uh, love. I think yep. actually a lot of it comes down to receiving the love of Christ yep. um, yes. and, and growing in that relationship. Yep. Um, Even though everybody tells you you're not worthy of it. Right. It's yep. like she. there was one person that she knew loved her and it was yep. Jesus and so that's where she was, right? And so yep. the more that we receive God's love, the more we recognize that it doesn't matter. Like God gets bigger and, and the opinions of other people get smaller, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, we mess up. Yeah, we're weak, but God loves us. And so suddenly yeah. there's this incredible freedom. Yeah. And then yeah. and then the identity piece. Yeah. And uh, there's this, a verse I love. I know we're trying to wrap it up. Okay. but Yeah, there's a verse yeah. I love. I, I do want to point it out because it's, I think of it so often. It's when Jesus is, is washing his disciples' feet before they go through uh, the Last Supper. Um, and we know like Jesus taking on that posture of washing his disciples' feet, like he was taking on the posture of a slave, right? That was yeah. not yeah. a role anyone wanted in that yeah. room. And they were just blown away that Jesus would do this. But there's a little verse, I think it's so easy to miss, uh, and yet it's so powerful. It says, Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything. Yeah. So authority, like Jesus knew the Father had given yeah. him authority over yeah. everything. Yeah, not just over something. No. Not just over a small group of people. No. Everything. Everything in the world. Yes. Yeah. All of creation. <laughs> Everything. Think about that. Think about that. Yeah. Jesus knew that he'd been given yeah. the authority over all things. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And what's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> and that he had come from God. So he knew yeah. where he came from. Mm -hmm. And that he would return to God. Yes. So that he knew where he was going. Yes. And so what does he do? He knows he's got all this authority. He knows he's come from God. He knows, knows he's going back to God. So what does he do? He doesn't like jump on top of the table and start shouting about how awesome he is. Yeah. He, he takes off his robe and he puts on a towel and he, he does this, this yeah. unbelievable thing where he steps mm -hmm. into the posture of, of a slave and he washes his disciples' feet. And so I think when we talk about identity, there's yeah. so much in that for us, yes. right? That when we know who we are, when we know that we've come from God, that God made us, that he loves us, that we've been redeemed by God, and we know that ultimately that's where we're headed, like, yeah. you know, this life ultimately is kind of short and that we're headed to eternity with God, it actually kind yeah. of like right-sizes things in yeah. our life. Yeah. So suddenly, uh, Jesus doesn't have anything to prove. He's got authority over everything. He's got yeah. nothing to prove, yeah. right? But he, so, he, so he's able to lay it all down yeah. in love. Yeah. And the more we know our identity in Christ, yeah. the more willingness I think we have to, to lay it down, to, to take on those lower postures, to identify with our weaknesses, to not have it all together. Yeah, because yeah. that's what the Bible says, right? Yeah. Is take the lowly position, mm -hmm. take the low position. Mm -hmm. And we, we want the high position. Mm -hmm. But if we really believe that all authority has been given to Jesus, which it says multiple times in the New Testament, Mm -hmm. He even says it in the Great Commission, right? Mm -hmm. All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. So not just here, not just over creation, but all of heaven. Yeah. Um, that's everything. Yeah. Why do we try to find our identity in worldly power? Hmm. I don't get it. Yeah. I it's, don't get it. It's other silly. than <laughs> other it than <laughs> our deep need to run from being vulnerable. Yeah. And I think we need to recognize where power really is, mm -hmm. where it rests. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is our Lord. Mm -hmm. And that we actually are giving up our power, giving it away. Mm -hmm. when, when we hold a position of power, our role is to give the power away. Yeah. Um, and to just rest in the identity that Christ has given us in him. Mm -hmm. And uh, that leads us to washing feet, mm -hmm. to serving others, yeah. to loving people in a radical way yeah. that the world could never imagine. Yeah. And, and that's reflected if you move out of the Beatitudes, mm -hmm. he then moves into the Sermon on the Mount. Right. And the Sermon on the Mount reflects every ounce of yeah, that. Yeah, totally, yeah. Where does everything you do come from? Yeah. Is it rooted in pride? Is it rooted in your insecurities? And so you react in those ways, or is it coming from a heart that's been transformed by Jesus? Mm -hmm. And so um, that's what the Beatitudes, right? If anyone who 
you, you know, you've heard that it is said to people long ago, you shall not murder, and anyone who murders is subject to judgment. And Jesus says, but I tell you, anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Mm -hmm. He's not upping the ante. Mm -hmm. He's saying, where's it coming from? Yeah. What's the heart behind your actions? Yeah. And so living the Beatitudes, a way of trust, lament, humility, justice, compassion, all of those things. Yeah. They take a radical, they take radical honesty. Yeah. With self, yeah. others, and with God. Yeah. And it starts in, in the heart, right? Is That's that right. The, the heart change that yeah. God brings into our lives is yeah. kind of the source of it all. Yeah. I think that actually connects. We had a follow-up question come in, mm -hmm. kind of connects. And it was a group actually uh, that was meeting and talking about this and they were kind of wrestling through essentially I think the idea of uh, Beatitudes and what they call us to in terms of what we do, our actions, okay. and the vulnerability yeah. in kind of like acting as, a, as somebody who's humble, acting as somebody who's poor in spirit just yeah. as we go about our age lives versus the vulnerability that we feel in sharing, right? Talking about that, that that can sometimes be a challenge for people. Mm. So I'm not, I'm not sure the Bible would separate it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm getting the sense in the question, like they're kind of separating them, that there's like kind of the being vulnerable with one another, talking about our stuff. Yeah. And then there's sort of like the, the doing vulnerability, meaning right. like connecting it to being poor in spirit, yeah. to, to, you know, being those who mourn or, or blessed, those who are meek and so on. I'm not sure that biblically they're actually separated because if, if vulnerability is rooted in identity, Mm -hmm. You can't separate the two. Right. You're, you'd be doing both. Yeah. To truly be vulnerable, you would be naturally, holistically doing both. Yeah. Um, and so if you're struggling on one or the other, um, it's probably because you're struggling with identity. Mm -hmm. It's probably because, you know, we need to try to hold on to control to certain things. Control is a, a huge theme in scripture yeah. and we're all guilty of it. Yes, like I'm a totally. massive control freak on a lot of different subjects, right? It's funny how I'll let go of some things, but yeah. want to control other right. things. So when I say that, I'm not in any way omitting myself yes. <laughs> from that, but control is often the thing that blocks us from yeah. connecting the action and the talking. Yeah. So I could be vulnerable saying, oh, you know, Pastor Tamil, you know, I suck at this and oh, I did this and yeah. whatever. But if I don't actually turn that into an action, yeah. that's not vulnerability, I think, to the Bible at all. Yeah. That's just me kind of wallowing mm. in a lot of ways. Mm. I guess it's a first good step. Yeah. You know, first step yeah. toward vulnerability. Yeah. But I don't think the Bible would separate them like that. Yeah. Um, Which I think that idea that it's actually rooted in our heart, right? Mm -hmm. That we, it's actually like an inner transformation um, that, that takes place in our lives and in our heart as we grow closer to Christ. I think that um, with that perspective in mind, it makes sense that we're kind of, they, yeah, they're, they're to, they go together, right? Yeah. So we're, as we grow in vulnerability, um, yeah, we're gonna be willing to share about it when it's, when it's appropriate, right? At the right yeah. time with the right people, that there's not, that we aren't hiding things, that we don't have yeah. secrets that we're not able to share. And at the same time, um, we're living in a way that's vulnerable, but it's both of these different aspects of how it's presenting is rooted in the reality that yeah. we've surrendered our lives to Christ, that we're yeah. growing in vulnerability, that we're yeah. rooted in our identity because we're receiving God's love and grace. Yeah. And so there's growth kind of in both, yeah. both directions, I think. Yeah. 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 And it's a constant battle. Yes. I think it's important yeah, to remember yeah. that, yeah. that Paul identifies that, that we have this battle between flesh and spirit yeah. and we've got this thing going on and no one's exempt from that and mm -hmm. no one is above it and no one, you know, it, it, it's, it's about maturing in our faith, getting away from drinking milk and starting to drink coffee. No. <laughs> is that um, how it goes? Is that the <laughs> No. <laughs> uh, you know, it's about maturing. Yeah. So it's actually about becoming a disciple. Mm -hmm. following him, growing in him, drawing closer to him, practicing our faith through spiritual practices. Mm -hmm. um, these are the things that draw us into a place of vulnerability that allow us to be more honest with self, honest with God, and honest with others. Mm -hmm. And so awesome questions. Yeah. They're, they're great questions. Yeah. Har hard to navigate. Yes. I, I fully admit that. That's yeah. hard to navigate. But the more vulnerable we can be with God, mm -hmm. the, the closer we will 
mm -hmm. draw closer to him. Yeah. So, good. Yeah. I think we're done rambling. I think so. 42 minutes. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. I hope that we helped a little bit. Uh, inviting you into to a, a Jeff Tamil conversation. Uh, we talk like this all the time. <laughs> and so, uh, um, you know, we certainly don't have all this figured out and we spend yeah. time talking yeah. about how, to, how does vulnerability work, yeah. how does all this work. And so we are all a work in progress. Yeah. Uh, but we have the grace of God. Yeah. We're forgiven by God. We're loved by Him. Yeah. One person in this world loves me yeah. more than anybody else possibly yeah. does yeah and so we we need to rest in that love yeah so yeah so keep the conversation going i'm mm -hmm. sure you guys have some great thoughts as well so talk about it in your small groups um and thanks for tuning in thanks for for tracking with us through the conversation yeah and we're not going to stop with the jesus way no we're so coming. we're going to continue with the jesus way we're just going to end the beatitudes mm. so we're going to go into a short christmas series we're going to talk a little bit about yeah. hope uh we hope and then, get that, we're going to talk about hope, we hope. Uh, and then in the new year, um, after we have some time of prayer and some different things, we're going to start digging into the Bible, the biblical concepts of peacemaking. Mm, yeah, and So it's, uh, it's going to be a fun, yeah. fun new year. Yeah. And we'll do questions yeah. at the end of that yeah, series. Yeah, it's been fun. Well. So we want to keep, keep doing that. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. We love you and Lord bless you. <laughs>